Joe Lynette getting herself in trouble with the local residents of Otter Creek, I bet. We have been looking at what Lynette has said through her own text messages about some of the residents of Otter Creek. Now, we can't share all of them with you because some of them are going to be reserved for court and the hearing. And the individuals who supplied them will be there as witnesses as well. But we can see what she has to say about her own family and about John. For example, in this one right here. It says, January 19th, keep in mind, she actually sent this to a resident of Otter Creek. And it says, I've asked John to buy one. I hope he does. Now, I personally don't understand what that means in that context. But, she goes on, I'm desperately cleaning. My grandson called me late last night after hearing a call between my... <sighs> it's probably just best to let you read it. Um recreational pill popping daughter and his mom the strong drink jeez i can't even believe this how are we starting it out this way already the strong drink i can't even say these words i can't say these words every time we share any video whatsoever in regards to lynette and crook uh youtube doesn't like it because it is not family friendly. I hope you understand these two are not family friendly at all. At all. So she goes on to say that uh, the strong drink child... Um, oh boy. Oh, well, we're just going to go on here. Abuser and they ate, turned me into child services for our cluttered camper and child mental and emotional abuse. Okay, you can see it right there. So her own family turned her in to children's services, okay? Now, you understand John in court in Ohio has said that uh, we turned them in one, no 10, no 12, no, a thousand times! Hope you realize those closest that understand the situation, her own family members are calling and reporting. And she even says here, I yell at the child, so I won't spank her for all the very naughty things she does. P-I-C. What does P-I-C mean? Mm -hmm. Any idea, George? P-I-C. All right, so we have a number of different issues going on right here. Number one, uh, there's tension within the family, without a doubt. Number two, there's tension between her and Crook. And number three, there's tension between her and the child. And so where does that tension come from? Well, that tension is all created by herself. This woman is not a victim of anybody except herself. I hope you understand that. Most people who go out and claim victim, 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 they're victims of what they have done, what they have said, what they continue to do on a daily basis. Her own family is calling services to protect this child from her. And she admits, I yell. Um, and then she goes on to say she's a very, very naughty uh, let's see that again. I don't know what PIC means. The very naughty, naughty things she does. Uh, okay, the mental, the emotional abuse. Even those closest to her, which is her family members, which have blocked her from their lives because that she's done these exact same things to them, they're calling services to try and help protect a child. Since John Crook technically is a resident of Otter Creek, 50% uh, ownership of 1.66 acres and 50% ownership of 1.66 acres with Lynette, I guess he would be a resident that she would want to talk about as well. And she has so, so much to say about him. January 26, 2023. I've never seen anybody at the meeting that was named Amber. I have no clue. Now, let's back up. I, I assume she's talking about the town hall meeting, okay? Again, I don't have this complete text in its context, um, although George does and the lawyer does. Uh, but it says, I've never seen anybody at the meeting named Amber. I have no clue what it is, but obviously she knows Russell. She's calling John Turtleman, talking about John, screaming at me. We all know whenever Lynette says somebody's screaming at her, that's a complete and total lie, okay? This is a woman that screams. And everybody's got to tell her to stop screaming. But screaming at me, 
and drunken driving. But John's not a pill head. He takes medication. Keisha prescribed by a doctor. I think she needs to look around. And I wonder myself if she's not one of these methed up heads running around here. Okay, so now she's called all the residents of Otter Creek oh, methed up heads. That's funny because one of her biggest supporters over in the town of Bronson, and when I say big, I mean physically big, uh, biggest supporters, is always talking about Jeremy's demeaning to all of the people and the residents. That's weird. It seems like Lynette is very demeaning and rude to all of the residents. I wonder myself if she's not one of these methed up heads running around here. Going around calling John Turtle Man, which who started Turtle Man? Who started all the nicknames? Mary Mary, nicknames yeah. is scary. It was all Mary. And we've already shown that in emails, and we will show more of that in the 6,000 plus emails. So, uh, Turtle Man and screaming at me, and it literally goes on to say drunken driving. Now, I have never heard it called drunken driving. I've heard it called what it actually is, but you know what? <sighs> We're deep in the mind of a, of a master criminal. And so, so maybe we should just, we, we should just learn, apparently. Uh, and going on about pills and, and somebody named Keisha. All right, who's Keisha prescribing things around here in Otter Creek? Please, somebody tell me who Keisha is. January 26th, going on and on. And this is in relation to the board members and the town council. Remember, Lynette was running for town council. Remember, Lynette couldn't even figure out how to fill out her paperwork. Laura not for Mott. Laura Mott, that I'm not for Mott. There are a lot of people that are not for Mott. Uh, had to help her fill out her paperwork, which then Lynette immediately ran to Facebook and said derogatory things about her and about Mary. And so here we are, January 26, 2023, and she says, yes, she does. We're trying to brainwash people, question mark, question mark, stupidity. Okay, well, um, I think she's attempted to brainwash a lot of people. As a matter of fact, as we're deep in this mind, I'm not so convinced. George thinks... That, that she doesn't even recognize and realize what she says and what she does. And I completely and totally disagree. I think she absolutely knows what she says and what she does. And she's a complete and total narcissist and does it on purpose. And therefore, she covers everything up with lies. Or brainwashing. Okay, she goes on to say, I should have said, do you know the Sunshine Law? Are you familiar with it? Are you familiar with all the ethic violations that the board has done? Are you familiar with all the negative things that they have done? The violations, I mean, for God's sakes! Who was on the board at that time? Well, let me tell you. Currently on the board at that time, January 26 was... Let's see, Mayor Russ the Sus, uh, Vice Mayor Stuart Stewart, who has put in his information to run again for the next upcoming election. We also had Captain Dan Shannon, uh, who has not put in any information. We also had Gail, our neighbor, and... Fuller sat at the table. Don the Con! Huh. Are we including Fuller? He sat at the table. Well, Fuller was definitely sitting at the table, but he had no position on the town Hall Council. And who was the clerk? And the clerk was Mary Mary. So nobody understood why Fuller was at the table. And Fuller maybe not even understood himself because he never said a single word. But now he can't stop talking. Except the meeting was changed. But Lynette, you know, she only speaks truth. She only... Are you calling me a liar? <sighs> My precious. She only speaks truth. And she goes on to say... Uh, are you familiar? She wants to say this to all the board members. Are you familiar with the ethic violations that the board has done? Are you familiar with all the negative things that, uh, that they have done? The violations, I mean, for God's sake. And this is the same woman that states that everything went wrong in Otter Creek when she ran for town council. And she's saying all of this went wrong because I couldn't control her. First of all, I've never tried to control anybody. I have no no, no need to or desire to. And uh, I definitely would not want her on a town council. I mean, they're dumb. Current, the current ones we have that she's talking about within this text, I mean, they're dumb. 
They, they don't have a clue as it is. But if they're up here with no clue, like she's so far down, so far down without a clue. Uh, you can't keep putting people who cause problems in a position to create the solutions. The ones that cause the problems rarely have the solutions to the problems they cause. Keep in mind, she's talking about her new buddy. Her buddy. Now, I don't know what kind of buddy he is. I have my... I have my theories, and you probably do too, but she's talking about her new buddy, Russ the Sus. You know, the guy that they illegally hung up signs in the public forum sections around town. Oh, and then they illegally put up a four by eight sheet of plywood. Uh, and she's saying again, January 26th, she's talking about Russ the Sus. This is 100% her. And it's not focusing. There it goes. I'm sure the camera's even scared to even see what comes out of this woman's <laughs> mouth. And it says, I do have a serious question. All of the grants, all of the money that Otter Creek has been given, where is it? She made a comment about he's not driving brand new cars and yada, yada, yada. Does, I, I'm not sure what the yada, yada, yada is. It's right in the middle. It's crazy. Whatever that means. Okay, yada, 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 yada. Does that mean they're not putting money away so they can retire and move away? Live, you know, high and mighty? Then, I mean, where's all the money? What improvements have been made to this town that they've spent all the great money on? I mean, really, does anyone know he's not so transparent about... Let me point it out right here. He's not so transparent. Okay, who is he? Well, that is Russ the Sus. He's not so transparent about it. We don't even know. We need to ask for copies of all the financials for the past three years, at least. He, I can answer that question. Who's he? Okay. The same guy that she said was stalking her at her property. Oh, okay. And Remember who, she said he turned his head so far back they needed to call a priest? Yes, I do That's remember that. That's who he is. Who's he? The former mayor, Russell Meek Sr. Oh, That's Russ she's referring to. the sus. Okay, so Russ the Sus, according to Lynette, is not so transparent. <clears throat> now they need three years of financials. And why is she asking for three years of financials? Because Russ the Sus never gave any financials. But you will recall at one of the current past meetings, Russ the Sus demanded, and Don the Con is demanded, of Madam Mayor Therese, who stepped down because of Form 6. Unfortunately, um, a lot of people stepped down because of Form of people, Six. There's so many articles such out there. A huge invasion of privacy. But again, if you want to be in full-time government and you're okay with that invasion of privacy, then it's not an issue. If you're somebody such as myself that says, "Hey, nobody needs to know what I own. It's none of your business," then I'm not going to be involved in government. I have no desire. I've never had any desire to be involved in government, any way, shape, or form. Which is why you don't see anything of anywhere else where I own properties, only in Otter Creek, because Otter Creek are the only ones that have tried to steal from me, who have successfully stolen from me, lied to me, manipulated, targeted me, and the list goes on and on. So, all of a sudden, Russ the Sus wants all these financials that he's never given to anybody, and even his good bud, Lynette, who was attacking him left and right, uh, who who he wanted to be on the new council with an opening when Gail stepped down. And town who, clerk. Who he wanted to be town clerk. Could you imagine this freak as town clerk? Could you imagine the issues? I mean, you think Mary Mary was bad. Could you imagine? Because she's always been involved. Always been involved in, in government. Which, again, is another lie. Now, I've post... As a matter of fact, I just sent a screenshot to my lawyer in regards to one of the things that Lynette posted. And let's see. And I'll bring it up right now because she talks about how she was all involved in Northport. Here it is right here. It's a big, long one. Okay. It's pretty big. And, and it's pretty condemning for her as well in court. So it goes on to say, we want everyone to know that we do not have any ill attentions towards anyone at Otter Creek Town Hall. 
What has been said... Oh, here we go. This is going to be incredible. Oh, contradicting already. Okay, so number one, we have every single screenshot that contradicts that first line. Okay, I'm not going to say sentence because this woman doesn't know how to use punctuation. What has been said is a flat-out lie. John never pulled a gun on anyone at any meetings anywhere. By the way, we have all the screenshots of her talking about John pulling the firearm out on Chad. Okay, so... Huge contradiction. She just didn't know it when she was typing this that we had all of this already. So you understand all of this is being used in court, right? She's a pathological liar, which she is. She absolutely is a pathological liar. And nor would he ever do that, nor have I or have any intentions of hurting anyone. We have been involved in politics. Here we go. Here we go. We have been involved in politics for many years. Oh, you know what that means? That means she's a public figure. And that means you can say absolutely anything you want about her whatsoever. It does not matter. She is not protected in any sense whatsoever of any criticism. You can, you can call her blankety blank, blank, blank to the blank to the blank. And there is absolutely no protection. She's a public figure. Because she has stated... I've been involved in politics for several years in Northport, where we lived, and our friends are currently the members of the Commission of Northport, which no, I think that's a whole contradiction itself, because I don't believe they have any friends whatsoever. Mm -mm. The only people she converses with are people that she's never met in person through Facebook. Pretty sad, to be honest. And so, uh, they are our friends. No one has ever had a complaint against us. There's another contradiction. We have text after text and we have screenshot after screenshot of people who have had complaints against them oh by the way we started that way her own family members calling children's services okay that we've ever done something so heinous uh, we do not have any ill intentions towards anyone in tall hall and there is a way of handling things that go on when you're in commission meetings, when you're running for office when you're doing whatever it means you go by the legality of everything really this woman is now talking about the law because in court she has openly stated over and over again, I don't know the law. I'm not a lawyer. I'm sorry. I'm not an attorney. And yet she's claimed to be a firefighter. She's claimed to graduate high school early and go on to early co college like Doogie Howser. Uh, the claims that comes out of this woman's mouth is incredible. So you go legality of everything. There are complaints that can be made there at the offices, dealt with whatever's going on. You never take things into your own hands. Interesting. The, the way that we could just tear this, this screenshot apart is amazing. We are very familiar with how you deal with things legally in any situation that you are in. Oh, so now we know why she has represented herself in Ohio and Florida. But wait, she's begging for people's money for a lawyer in Florida. Because now, instead of being on the offense of the plaintiff, she realizes she is not the plaintiff. Even though legally she is the plaintiff, she realizes she's freaking done and she is the defendant and it's coming down on her in the courtroom. So, but she knows how to deal things legally in any situation. And we have also never purchased tracking devices and placed them on anyone's vehicle. You know what they said they were going to do that. Oh, here we go. This is great. This is great. Uh, I did not make signs. Okay. All right, let's make sure we get this because, number one, she's going to jail for perjury. Number two, she's going to jail for defamation. So we've already got her in multiple places. This is another place right here. By the way, if you're going, oh, man, Jeremy, why are you sharing this right now? You're not in court. This is all part of discovery. She has every right to see what we're using against her and her lawyers, and it's already in their hands. And if it's not in their hands, it will be in their hands. So she goes on, I did not make signs and put them up in Otter Creek. I haven't found one person in Otter Creek that has ever seen a sign. Okay. Well, that's interesting because a forensic handwriting expert, not some Joe Schmo off the street, that I paid $5,000 to actually evaluate your signs that you made. Comparison. Here's the best part. Comparison. Remember, she knows everything legal and how to do with it. Do you understand every single time she went to the courthouse and she filed another ridiculous motion and another ridiculous motion and she wrote, Jeremy Hales talked about me in his... It's video. And then she went, Jeremy Hales talked about me. Every time she went to the court, 
Every time she filed a bogus motion, she gave the handwriting expert another example and another example and another example. I hope you get the irony of this. This woman literally sealed her own fate by going to the courts and, t and writing the name Jeremy Hales, which is now used in comparison. The report is over. The report is done. $5,000 for forensic, forensic report that claims 100% that Lynette Preston wrote every single sign. So now you have perjury. Now you have defamation. And the list of charges are just going to keep adding up and adding up and adding up. Here's another fun one. This is when she's running for town council, which she loses. She absolutely loses this past April. And now, you know, she's, she's put in her declaration of uh, interest for the open seat, which she did not get in. Oh my goodness. I couldn't imagine the the shape Otter Creek would be in if... Wrong people. Wrong people are running this town, is what it comes down to. And you need the right people in there. It says, it's fine. I'll do my own. I just, I'll just send out something simply saying who I am. I don't think I'm going to get in anyways. In other words, the people in Otter Creek aren't going to vote her in. Which is strange because... We've already shared a screenshot stating, with, from her, not, not from us, that 98% um, of the residents of Otter Creek just love her and John. Love her and John. Which, that's not what she says here in January. People are connecting me, right in the middle. People are connecting me with John. Oh boy. So now she's a victim of John again. It's not her big mouth. It's not all the garbage and all these all these pages that she created on Facebook. It's not all the garbage that she spewed about all of the people. Now it's all about John. Because people are connecting me with John. And I'm not with John. Basically, I mean, we're here on the same property. But that doesn't mean I'm connected to him. You think I'm joking? Look at the bottom right there. All right, so here's a woman that's been married how many times, George? Seven. Seven times. Seventh seven times one married. Was John Crook. Seven times divorced. Divorced because. But marries people as an ordained minister. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you if you're going to have somebody to officiate your wedding, you probably ought to have somebody with some experience, right? And let's face it, this woman's got some experience, okay? Her resume is pretty long. How many times have you been married? Well, seven. How many times have you been divorced? Well, seven. Now, the seventh time, and again, we have all these screenshots as well. I want to be very clear. We have screenshots that prove everything that we say. There is nothing that we just have up and said ever on any video at any time. We have all of the evidence. Before we say anything, we have the evidence. That's the difference. Defamation is stating something that is untrue about somebody. So when Lynette, and we're going to call this other person John Doe, or it very well could be Jane Doe, wrote on these signs, Jeremy is a child, da 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 da, rapist, and things along those lines. That is complete and total derogatory defamation. It's not true. When I share with you, hey, this the animals are being neglected, and then Fish and Wildlife come out and film and say, yes, they're being neglected. You have to do this and this and this. You realize it's true, okay? When I, when I tell you that this, this is what she's done, this is what she's done, you realize I have everything to back that up. It's true. It's 100% truth. Either she said it, we screenshotted it, we got it. Regardless of whether she lied about it, as we share it with you, we share it as truth of what we read from her own mouth, okay? And to be clear, again, nobody should ever contact anybody in regards to Otter Creek or anybody that we discuss or we share in this news story of our lives. We will handle everything legally. And no, we will not hire Lynette as our legal counsel. You can see how far that's gotten her. But you have her now saying, the people of Otter Creek, they don't like me. And they don't like me because they don't like John. Wait, so what is it? 98% of the people, which you realize why she picked 98. Because I always say there's 100 people in Otter Creek. When I say there's 100 people in Otter Creek, I don't know how many people there are in Otter Creek. It, it goes above and under, above and under 100. I just rounded 100. So she's going, oh, it's just George and Jeremy that don't like me. 
All right, so 98% of people in Otter Creek just love you and John. Yet in January, here you are texting privately a resident of Otter Creek that uh, you're not with John. They're associating with you with John. They don't like John. You're not even with John. You're not connected to him at all. And yet, this is the exact same man that you have looking after a child, technically locked up in a vehicle for hours upon hours in court sessions, which there's been four so far, where the law is being broken based on civil protection orders, and he's bringing that child in the aspect of breaking the law. Now that child has to see deputies come over, make a move. He didn't move far enough. I mean, it's, it's just insanity. Complete and total insanity. You're either with him or you're not. You're protecting a child or you're not. You're following the law or you're not. Want to see what she has to say about the neighbors up front? You know, Brian and Tina, right? You remember them. Tina is one of the kids that had this property in the family trust, and they wanted so much money, and then they split it, but then they sold it to me illegally because they did not disclose encroachments, and that's the illegal portion. There were two encroachments that they knew about, and they didn't disclose it, which means I can get all my money back, and I have up to 10 years to do that statute of limitations so and then brian gets drunk comes over on the property trespasses then destroys property with the finger thankfully i have a good sense of humor and i actually turn it around and point it towards him uh so here's lynette right here as a matter of fact i might as well just just so brian and tina as they hear about this in the local otter creek gossip they understand who this actually came from and it says so i'm watching george and jeremy's latest video from here in Florida. So who's did, no joke, it says, who's did? George, who's did your hair? George, who's did dress you this morning? She uses talk to text. Um, so that means. Who's that did's means put these crazy sh clogs on you? These are Uggs. These are Uggs okay, shoes yeah, that well, we found this in a storage unit. They're Ugg, all right. They're, they're Uggs that we found in a storage net. unit. Ugh. <laughs> Oh, I only wear them around the house. So I'm watching George and Jeremy's... Yeah, it sounds like a horse galloping around the house. Uh, so I'm watching George and Jeremy's latest video from Florida. Hold on a second. That's another contradiction. You know why? Why? Because during the deposition, she told the attorney oh, that's she doesn't true. watch she told, her videos. She told in her deposition she never watched. She's told. She told our lawyer in the deposition that she's only watched three, <laughs> maybe yeah. four videos of ours. That's it. By the way, um, we have plenty of text of her talking about our videos with the other residents of Otter Creek, which is going to come up in court as well. Obviously, contradiction of her deposition. It's a lie. It's perjury. You, you can see where this is headed for her. Okay. Um, actually, you can't see the full... The full you, you can see the sprint. You're not seeing the marathon. But uh, that's okay. We haven't revealed the marathon yet. So who's did all that on their property? I'm sure it was Brian and Tina. Here so she she's is falsely accusing throwing Brian and Tina under the bus again, which is so funny because she was just claiming in other texts that Brian and Tina Brian and Tina are 100 percent on her side. Brian and Tina want us out of Outer Creek. Brian and Tina. We have all those texts as well. So to Brian and Tina's face, she plays against Jeremy and George. To Jeremy, well, to other residents, she plays against uh, Brian and Tina. The reality is Brian is a miserable human being and Tina is the biggest gossip in the world who will never put any action to her words, but she'll talk about you and backbite you like crazy. They're despicable people. They've been given every opportunity to do what's right. George and I went above and beyond to help them, to give them back things that were left on the property. I paid Travis Willis to move their own stuff because they wouldn't even come and get the stuff. And then they have the audacity to sell the property illegally, then trespass, then destroy property. And then, oh my goodness, and then apparently tell Lynette that they're going to press charges on us when I cut off feed, hog feed feeder from our own property, which I left open for buying for nine months. Brian and Tina buy it? Nope. Oh, doesn't matter. Seller wouldn't have sold it to him anyway. Could, the, the, the seller who saw, and this is a whole nother video. Seller sold it to us, found all kinds of plot plants on his property from there, which every mm -hmm. time we go by, it's 
nonstop. It smells. It's Skunky. skunk. It is skunk every single night. Skunk, skunk, skunk. This isn't just casual use. Whatever's going on in there is is high volume use, and it is not okay. Um, and and if they're so worried about consequences and people knowing that about their business, then they should take precautions. Number one, don't do it. You know, kind of the same as uh, the children's advocate. If you have to go and change your Facebook profile because now you're worried, you should have never done it in the first place. You should have never did what you did. You should have never said what you said. You should just treat people with respect. And then these people have issues afterwards when they're not treated with respect. Funny. Funny how that two-way street works there, right? Okay. Uh, she says, I was doing dishes watching YouTube and it came up on my phone. And she says, well, one of the peacocks died. I did make sure that chickens and peafowl can have uh, the broccoli. So it wasn't broccoli. One of the peacocks just died while they were filming. But but they found survey. Why is she talking about our peacocks? She obviously is watching very we, intently. She is. And she, oh my gave, goodness. she gave vegetables. She to... knows all the details of what our animals are eating. Mm -hmm. But she's told our lawyer she doesn't watch anything. She's only watched three or four, maybe. Oh, boy. But they found surveyor stakes all over their property. Okay, read it right there. And she throws Brian, it's Brian and Tina. It's Brian and Tina. Mm -hmm. It's Brian and Tina trespassing on their property. All over the property. Some sure, some sure, in other words, it should say, I'm sure Tina and Brian, but why would they survey on their property? Oh my goodness. And the, the resident said, oh no, I hadn't heard about that. That's, that's bad. Um, that's, no, that's terrible. <laughs> the other resident isn't watching. Um, you know, this resident could actually go to court and say, no, I, I haven't watched this video. Yet, it's Lynette lying like crazy. She knows every detail. Um, and so, she goes on. Oh, she even goes on to say, I just watched it. When did they get home? It, it goes on here. I just watched it. When did, And the home is down here. I don't know how to get. She's she's referring to our vacation when we went to Vegas oh. and Hawaii. Which she mentions that she watched those videos too. Oh, she, she did. Is it in these texts? Okay, well, let's see. Uh, January 31st. January 31st. I bet we're talking about the election again. Good morning. John told me that nine are running. I'm assuming it's those that hold the seats. Us and Don's son. Don's son is Darren. Might have a little something to do with the Lady Pirate. You know, Rosemary's side gig. One of many side is gigs from Town Hall. Is it Darren or Roll? I thought it was Darren. Uh, it's Darren. Don's son, Darren. We need to get residents to see the changes we want. We'll greatly help the community as a whole. That's funny how she was saying in January she wants all these changes to help the community. But now she's now she's buddy buddy with, with Russ the Sus and Don the Con and saying, No! We want our garbage! We don't want to change! We don't want nothing! And here she's saying, We we need to get the residents. We need to get the residents to see the changes we want, which will greatly help the community as a whole. I only ran. Look at this. Here's the best part. I only ran to get Russell out. Oh, huh. <laughs> hmm. So, Lynette only ran to get Russell out. We know she didn't run because she has any knowledge or any wow. experience or any insight to bring. I only ran to get Russell out. And to truly, to have something to do, focus my brain on. Oh my goodness. Well, I that's how even, her brain works. I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine. Oh, I can't, I, there's so many areas I could go there with that. But focus my brain on as I'm very lonely and alone. She did say her and John aren't together. So, I mean, that kind of makes sense, right? I'm very lonely and alone. But she also said 98% of the people in Otter Creek absolutely love her. And support her. Huh, and support her. That's true. That's true. Uh, but I'm very lonely and alone. Oh, I know why. Because she never stops running her mouth. She is literally verbally attacked online, literally every single resident of Otter Creek. And she wonders why she's lonely and alone. Huh, because that's how her mouth works. Okay. Um, it would get me out a bit, give me a little reprieve from this boredom. How in the world can you be boredom? You live on a dump. How about you clean the dump and then you won't be bored? I mean, that's how my brain works. 
How in the world can you be bored when you have so much garbage to clean up? I don't get it. Uh, not to mention there's a child to train that's four years old and still in diapers. I don't get it. Seriously doubt knows the ABCs or anything along those lines. Now, I don't know for sure, but I seriously doubt it. How in the world can you be bored? How can you be bored? I don't get it. I don't get it. And understand, I'm asking hypothetical questions to the camera as a whole. None of this should ever be interpreted as communication with any resident that I'm discussing or individual that I'm discussing. This is communication between George and I and a camera. That's it. 100%. Okay, uh, it would get me out from this boredom. I hope that the only ones that win are those that truly want change and growth for Otter Creek. Water being number one priority. We need to serve each other and be kind. Oh my goodness. Are you, are you believing this? We need to serve each other and be kind to each other. This is the woman that created multiple, multiple Otter Creek Facebook pages and talk trash about all of the residents mm. over and over and over. This is the woman who put a marker to a poster board and in the middle of the night staked 11 of them to the ground making false allegations that could destroy a man's life. This is the woman that screams to a camera on Zoom during a deposition. <laughs> okay. You know what? Here's what I think. If we need to serve each other and we need to be kind to each other, that kindness starts in the home, okay? That service starts in the home. So how about she starts by being kind to John? How about she starts by serving John? I guarantee you none of it happens that way. I know because we've heard it, we see it, and there's neighbors right around them witnessing it every single day. Every day. We here in Otter Creek are living it on a daily basis. So if she thinks we need to be kind to each other, why doesn't she start? Why should she start with John? Regardless of who John is and what John has done. Regardless of what John is going to do, why doesn't she start with John? Example it for a child growing up, but this is how you act and you behave appropriately. But it doesn't happen that way at all. It's all talk. It's all a mask that she wears. This world is a very scary place, and it very much so is, especially with them across the street from us. There's no reason why we should have been stalked to Otter Creek, why we should be in fear of our lives. And you go, hold a second. If John is, is on strong drink and recreational uh, pills, and if she's on all of these pills, like the funniest thing in the world is when we were in Ohio, she cross-examined me and she goes, Mr. Hales, how much do I weigh? I don't know, 110 pounds, 100 pounds, I don't know. She's like, and you're scared of me? I went, well, you know what? Your firearm that you posted that you'd pop a cap in my blankety blank blank uh, weighs less than two pounds. And yeah, I have, a, I, have a, I have a fear of losing my life by a psychotic, literally psychotic individual with major instability who continues to bring more unstable and addicted persons in a turnaround door style on this piece of property with another individual who's flashing his firearm at anyone and everyone he has a disagreement with, who's on drink and is not thinking rationally at it all. They both, they both are an endangerment to themselves, to the child, to myself and George, to the residents of Otter Creek. I'm not the only resident in Otter Creek afraid of getting shot. You have to understand all the neighbors around them, which they talk to our lawyer to be witness in court. And our lawyers wanted some residents, not all of the residents. But that doesn't mean they may not still be there for the trial. Um, so we need to serve each other. We need to be kind to each other. This world is a very scary place. Another food manufacturer was burnt down. Eggs are going to skyrocket. I, I don't. How does this brain work? This world's a scary place. Eggs are going to skyrocket. That's what she's afraid of? You think I'm joking? Eggs are going to skyrocket. You, you think I'm joking. This world is a scary place. Eggs are going to skyrocket. Why would she care? They had chickens to lay eggs. <sighs> well, at maybe, that time. maybe she could actually see the future and knew that John was going to post all the chickens for $10 a piece. And they're selling everything that isn't tied down because they need a lawyer in both Florida and in Ohio. More about Russ the Sus. More about Laura Mott. 
Let's see what we have here. We shouldn't have to beat them over the head with this water thing. If Russell has done so good, why can't we drink the water? It's that easy. What has Laura done for Otter Creek? Right there. Mm -hmm. Ah, and she's running again. <laughs> and what has Laura done for Otter Creek? Change is inevitable. By the way, Laura told me I couldn't film her out in public property at Town Hall. And I gave her the greatest piece of advice that I give to people over and over again. You don't want to be filmed? Don't get in front of my camera. Don't talk to me. Just keep your mouth shut. How's that going to How work? hard is it? She ran for a seat. How's that going to work if she makes that, it? I don't, she's going to be filmed every single time. And everything she says and everything she does is going to be dissected. And whether she likes it or not, she's a public figure. So you, you, you figure that out. And Stuart Stewart is running again. So anyways, uh, what has Laura done for Otter Creek? Well, Laura has done, in my opinion, very little. She's done whatever Russ the Sus has told her to do. Now, Russ the Sus can throw her under the bus and say, no, 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 I didn't do that illegal water resolution when we hijacked Jeremy's water. It was all Laura. And this is going to come up in court. And those two will go against each other. Guarantee it. I promise it. Each of them are going to try and save their own butt. And so it is It is happening. It's, it's going to happen. You realize so much is going on right now, and there's time that I have to pursue different things. But uh, they'll each try and throw the under, under the buff, bus. So change is inevitable. But she goes on to say, we need it now. And then the person says, exactly. We need it now. Exactly. And then this is rather interesting. Lynette goes on to talk about all the money she gets because the child is on disability. I'm trying to find a free IRS place to do my taxes. HR, H and R Block did them last year, and I know I'm on disability. But because, because the child, I'm just going to say the child, because the child is 100% disabled. Let me see if I can. Boy, that is not working. All right, here we go. All right. You could probably see the disabled right under my finger. Mm -hmm. Because the child is 100% disabled, I qualify for the CTC child tax credit. I got it last year, but they gave me a new, very rudy lady. Tyner judged me from the jump and right off said the... Did any of that make sense to you guys? I'm not joking. They gave me a new, very rudy lady. Tyner judged me from the jump and right off said... Apparently, her and John are sharing the same recreational things. February 8th. Boy, does she have some things to say about John. By the way, that new Rudy lady in the last text, uh, she goes on to say that, that she was racist. I, I, I guess most people don't realize that Lynette is black, but she's told us all that her whole family is black. I, I don't get it. George, do you understand any of that racism in that part? Um, well, apparently... Well. If I were to show you the entire text, the woman, the Rudy lady was African American. Oh, so and she's so saying that, she's racist of yes, whites. Correct. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Wait, now hold a second. That's a whole contradiction because Lynette has said that she's black and her whole family is black. So is this woman white or black? I don't I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. She's delusional. By the way, if you haven't figured it out yet. Uh, George and I are not racist by any stretch of the imagination, mm -hmm. and so we don't discriminate. We don't discriminate. We have friends of all colors, races, nor, ages, nor bigotry. I don't care if you're from the north, the south. I don't care where you're from. I don't care where you're from. I don't care how you were raised. I don't care. I don't care what the color of your skin is. I don't care what your gender is. I don't care about those things. I care about your heart. Mm -hmm. I care about who you are as a person. I care about how you treat other people. And this person is a very toxic very horrific person okay and so she goes on to say i was unable to do what i'm going to do today because the person i need to talk to want to i today i would never hurt john intentionally oh man there's just some garbling gook okay i would never hurt john intentionally but tonight he was screaming at me to shut the Front door. Blank up, and I told the child to go in the camper, and then she told me to sh shut the duck up. Now it's affecting her. You think? Another contradiction. Oh boy. Why? 
because she has stated over and over again. She has posted in her many groups that her and John do not swear or ever use any foul language in front of the child. And there you have it. She's sharing it with a local resident that they swear in front of the child. Well, quite interesting, to say the least. Another lie. Debunked! Man, who's, who's the one really... De- when are those debunked shirts coming out? Soon? I think they're coming Stay out soon. Stay tuned. Oh, she goes on to say, I'm getting... I'm getting so afraid of him, right above my finger. Do you think she ran to the court and filed a uh, I, petition yeah. for injunction? Well, you would think if she's so afraid of him. I'm getting so afraid of him. It's every time I talk to him. You would have thought that she would have ran to the court like she did when she told people that she watched my videos. She said in my my paid member videos that, G, that God told me to... Um, it's it's horrific what she said. It's all completely to totally unalive. Lie. To unalive the bad neighbors. Mm-hmm. Um, by the way, I've never ever 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 talked about anybody in that way whatsoever. Um, and the members can contest to that. And well, the court can go and watch them all for all. I, well, as long as they pay the membership fee. That that I mean, I got to get part of that sixty one thousand back somehow. Um, so I'm getting so afraid of him and no, she did not run to the courthouse and try and get an injunction. That we know of. We know she did not run to the courthouse to get an injunction because the injunction on somebody who's living on the same property with you, family, married, whatever, uh, you don't have to meet the burden of three offenses. It's boom, you get it. Okay. So the entire bed in the shed was full of mounted with clothes and he's telling me that a handful of clothes and a toe and a little bit of clothes on the clothesline is what was on that bed and all of my and the child's clothes were out there and now I can find none of them I have no clue what he did with them and he's all I said was there did they go and he starts screaming at me and cursing at me and telling me to shut the F up in front of Pete and Drew. Do you know who Pete and Drew are? There are people that she met on the campground when they lived there. Oh, for real. Have we talked to Pete and Drew about actually uh, being witnesses? Because I think we should. We got time. Judge has given us till March 1st. We got more time to get all these witnesses lined up. It's incredible. Uh, Start screaming at me. He was cursing and telling me to shut the F up in front of Pete and Drew. I'm, I just can't, I can't, I can't do this anymore. And I'm begging, I begged him to stop doing what he's doing and he refuses. And I know that he was doing it long before he got with me. And I can't risk my property, child, my life over something so stupid. I just, his family will take me for everything. He'll turn him in. I gotta get a minute loose everything anyway. I can't afford everything, so I don't know what I'm going to do. I would suggest, first of all, learning the English language, okay? And then, once you figure out grammar and syntax and punctuation, apply it to your text, please, by all means. Because the court is going to have a much easier time when we present all these screenshots of your text when they can actually be intelligent and understandable. So there's another contradiction with that last sentence. Okay, let's hear it. She's saying that John's family will take her for everything and that she'll lose everything, her property, everything. She is going to lose everything. But she's 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 saying that John's family is going to do that to her. Oh, so... She didn't know about all the court cases coming uh, for what she's done to everybody else. And you understand, I hope you truly understand, from eyewitnesses in Otter Creek that will be um, witnesses in court, this isn't 100% John. John is a problem. There's no doubt John is a problem. This is 100% John and 100% Lynette. She does the exact same stuff to him that he does to her. They teach each other how to actually treat each other. Now, I've often said as they moved into the area and everybody said, oh my goodness, he's a, he's a, he's a town drunk. Gets along, he would get along with Russell all the way. And, I, and I've stated again and again to, to George, well, if I lived with that woman, I would be too. 
It's the only way to numb the pain of her voice and the things that she says, and she's screaming. Well, she's even so, admitted in other texts we read that John shows up drunk to the meetings and that it doesn't help. Neither of them are helping the other. Let's uh, let's look at another one here. Okay. Um, this is February 12th. How is your back? Okay, so the resident is saying, how is your back? And said, uh, yikes, sorry to hear that, big hugs. Lynette goes on to say, hurts badly. My headaches haven't left. Ugh. Hug. I'll be talking to the doc in the AM. Definitely need an MRI, but need to stand up. These darn things scare me to death. Huh. Did she did she run to Levy County Courthouse when she uh, when she got an MRI? I mean, if she's scared to death of the MRI, you think she ran to the county courthouse in regards to that too? Mm -mm. She was probably a little bit more forgiving with the MRI. Oh, okay. All right. So um, then she goes on later down here. February 14th. Isn't that Valentine's Day? Mm-hmm. Okay, Valentine's Day. I can't come to the meeting tonight. John is down. I mean, down. His knee is totally, he can't walk. He's in so much pain, he's sick. As a matter of fact, this is probably the exact same time that um, residents went and saved their lives even though they were talking so much garbage about him on Facebook pages. Mm -hmm. It was all defamation. Um, okay. And uh, is, is that what they're... Okay, I have no idea. You know what? I have, I have no idea what all of this is about. Honestly, it's all, it's all unintelligent and it's all ridiculousness. I get it now in context. She watched online and then she's trying to say, wow, that was nuts. Again, Russ the Sus, Stuart Stewart, all of them try and scam and scheme. She says, I wish I would have been there now. Well, she So wasn't. is another word for scam and scheme corrupt? Uh, that would be corrupt, mm -hmm. unless you're talking to Don the Khan. All right. Um, so let's see. Uh, Don... She goes on to say, I can't agree more. Don did very good tonight. Why do you think she said that? Because at this point in time in February, Don was the enemy of Russell and Mary. And remember, we've shared emails in regards to that. Russell and Mary were trying to push Don out of town hall to the point of locking him out of a meeting illegally. And so she, Lynette goes on in February, I can't agree more. Don did very good tonight. And... Here, you can read it for yourself. It's right up top. And Russ thinks he's the shizzle. Don't stink for sure. And yes, Russell thinks his shizzle don't stink for shizzle. Um, my goodness. <laughs> she goes on to say, I'm worried about John. He's never been like this before. He just took blood pressure meds and pain meds. He's bad. That's when he was going septic. Oh, in the brain. In the, yeah. I was, the sepsis I thought, was going up to I his I thought brain. he was always septic in the brain. Um, so here we see yet again, Russ the sus, her new buddy, she says he thinks his crap don't stink. Mm, he needs some air freshener then. She goes on to say, I hope nobody votes for Russell, Laura, and Dan. Ugh. No, seriously, she puts that stupid ugh thing there again. It's really annoying. I, I, if she's using talk to text, does she literally go, ugh, every time she's talking? She has to. Mm -hmm. She doesn't literally rock, walk around like this because she's so bored not taking care of a child or the property and talking into it and then going, huh, I'm talking into my phone. Ugh. Boy, could you imagine seeing that face? All right. I, um, I hope nobody else votes for Russell, Laura, and Dan. And they're afraid their stuff is going to be uncovered. Look at it right there. They're afraid their stuff is going to be uncovered. Uncovered. Right there. Uh, it's been uncovered. Isn't that part of corruption? That would be part of corruption. And Dan is the guy that she was talking to when she intentionally went to the post office that day knowing I was there. Oh, yeah, Captain Dan. Mm -hmm. Now, this is pretty interesting here. So you, you, you think, hey, has this been a constant problem? No. Uh, I was very cordial. Now, I ignored a mass amount of text messages from this woman. This woman will send text messages this long, and nobody in their right bored. mind is ever going to read them. And so 
it was one out of every 50 text messages I would ever even respond to. And usually it was okay and I wouldn't even read it. And so um, out of the blue, as we planned for half mil time to grill, she messages me and says, can I bring my tortoises to your half mil time to grill? Now keep in mind, I did not invite her. I did not invite her. Well, there's an open invite to the world, right? We said we have so many spots. If you got your registration in early, you're in. So I did not invite her, even though there was an open invitation. So she asked if she could come and bring her tortoises, in which we went, well, turtles is kind of a thing. And we went, fine, that'll be, that'll be fine. So that was her way in. It was her way in instead of paying $50 fee. for mm-hmm. registration was to bring a turtle. For her and okay. the child. And so uh, that was her way of not paying registration. She invited herself and I said, okay. And then now she goes on to say this. Now, this is extremely interesting in light of today's incidences in court. I'm so thankful Jeremy is allowing us to do his meet and greet with the tortoises for his fans. Great publicity and fun. And I'm having Sarah, my friend, help with me with the tortoise and my child. I'm making us all t-shirts. It's a shell thing. I'll launch my YouTube page that day. So, all right, now she's trying to make it a, a, a attack on YouTube. She doesn't like YouTube anymore, which, by the way, she has a YouTube. Not, by the way, she has an illegal Facebook page for the child as well. Uh, you have to be at the age of 13 to have a Facebook page. And, um, and it goes on and on and on and on and on. Now, to be clear, she has told the courts that all of this went wrong when George came on her property and told her, and this is her words, not George's, throw her child away. In the garbage. In the garbage, she has she has literally stated, typed out, or talked to text. We have all the screenshots. And she stated this, and that happened in February. Okay. Now, Lynette further goes on to ask me, can I put up a donation box? And so that, the was, answer, that was two weeks after she threw so, me off her property. So she's telling the world, which by the way, in the deposition, when you get to see the deposition, I specifically have my lawyer ask her, did you tell George to get the F off your property as she's posted all over Facebook? And her answer, as you could guess, is... I have never told her to get the F off my property. I told her... You need to go. Which never happened. George, what actually happened that day? She never said you need to go. I she came at me with all of her bills and how much she's paying for this and that and that and that her electric bill was nine hundred bucks and that at the end of the day when she's done paying her bills, she doesn't have enough money to feed herself. All right, pause right there. In other words, she's begging us for money. She's going, Oh, I can't make it up. She's She's like a person out on the corner holding a sign. Please, money. I need food. Money for anything. She's begging for money. Okay, so she comes at you with all of the problems. So then... Just her way of begging for money. Correct. So then I told her, wow, it seems like you have a lot on your plate. You have a lot on your plate. And the first time I ever met her, she told me she wanted wanted to throw John off the property. She wanted him out of her life. And that... What did she say? That she was done with him. And then I said, the very first time I ever met you, you told me that you wanted John out of your life. I said, you cannot handle this property by yourself. You need him here helping you. And she interpreted that in her, the way her brain works. It doesn't work. She took that and twisted it. And the words, you need to put your daughter up for adoption and throw her away in the garbage is where she is, where she got out of that conversation. That's what she got out of the conversation. And then went on on more about her, all the problems in her life and how he's abusive and that the conversation must have went on for about 20 Did minutes. she ever tell you to get off the property? No. She helped me load. At the end, I said, I have a lot going on. I have a lot to you do. You had to tell her I'm leaving yes. because she doesn't stop. Correct. She would have just kept going on and on because she's lonely and has no friends. She helped me put the bread in the back of my Jeep, and then I left because I told her I have a lot going on. All right. So we all understand. Number one, this is how she she backhandedly asks for donations. She gives you every problem, every bill, and I don't have enough money. She's asking you for money, okay? Number two, George had to remove herself from the property. She's one of these people that won't shut up, and George is going, I got to go. 
As a matter of fact, George came back and said, I am never going over there again. Because my anxiety ever, level ever. was so goes, bad. I will never talk to her again. I will never go over there again. And the reason why she even went over there is because Lynette kept texting me and texting me, text bombing me. I have bread. I have bread for your animals. We didn't need bread for our animals. We rarely ever give our animals bread in the first place. And she's getting all this bread free from children's table. And there are people who could eat this bread, not animals. But it's got to the point of being so annoying and I didn't want to go over there. I was like, can you just go over there so she stops texting me? So this is where Lynette is telling the judge and the lawyers, oh, it all went wrong when George came to my property. Oh, that's funny because then she asked me, can I bring, after the fact, can I bring tortoise to your half mill time to grow? I'm like, yeah, that's fine. And I'm not going to have to deal with her. She'll be in one spot set up and the whole deal. And that was her way of not paying to be at the event. And this is all after the fact. And then she asked, can I put up a donation box? And I went, absolutely not. That is completely and totally inappropriate. This event is not for donations for tortoise, tortoises and turtles. This is event is a celebration of half mill time to grill. It is not okay. Which then she said, well, I can't come then. And I went, well, actually, she sent me a huge text this long. And, at the, and I just went, okay. Like I cared. Like anybody cared. So if she couldn't get donations, if she wasn't allowed to solicit donations, she's the one that invited herself in the first place. I hope when you understand When she was going to use your fan base to launch her YouTube channel. So she's okay with my fan base giving her money, but if you look at all of the screenshots, and all of these will be in court, you'll see this actually used in court. She's completely against my fan base giving money us money. And it's wrong. But she wanted to use the fan base to launch her own YouTube. You understand this is all about money. She came here for money. She stalked us here for money. She keep constantly begged for money. And then because she didn't get any money, then she exploded on everybody in Otter Creek. Okay. And she's okay with my YouTube fan base sending her money, which she's actually getting now. So she's going to the court and she's going, he's damaged me. He's hurt me so bad. She's never got donations before. My fan base, my haters, which are your biggest fans, are sending her money. Somebody sent her $7,000 for a lawyer. She's actually better because of my YouTube videos than she's ever been before. What else does she have to say about John? February 15th. Here we go. More at the bottom about the John than at the top. But... It says this simply, I have faith God's going to make me who I was again. Okay, well, this was in February. We are now almost in February. This was almost a year ago. I have faith God's going to make me who I was again. I'm curious if she's gotten to that point yet. This is almost a year now. Uh, I will find pictures. I'll show you. I raised my grandbabies, all of them at some point, which she forgot to mention that a judge actually put a non no contact order on her to stay away from her grandbabies. But that'll come up in the court case here in Levy County. And living happily, then the abuse started. He did the same thing to his first wife, Lori. She ended up dying from alcohol and drugs because she lost H herself to the abuse. I won't do that. And yet here a year later, the same man is on that property. Now, if this, I have to take this one of two ways. Number one, Lynette is lying for sympathy. Okay, victim, victim mentality, lying for sympathy. Please, woe is me, woe is me, love me, love me. I'm a victim, I'm a victim, I'm a victim of everybody and everything. Or she, or, you know, she's, she's projecting, she's doing this to John, right? I, and we know for a fact that she does do this to John. So she's either lying for sympathy, she's projecting because she does it to John, or it's true. And if it is true, then you have to ask the question, why didn't she go to Levy County Courthouse? Why didn't she run as fast as she says she ran when she saw my videos? And why didn't she get a protection order? So much stuff in here about John. So much stuff. Um, this is February 19th. Uh, I can share with you some of the text messages and some of the phone calls I recorded that will show you what John cook puts me through and how he treats me and what he does to me and he involves other people to make make other people do things to me i was threatened today for somebody to call dhs and take away my child because i won't do something illegal and did she run to the courthouse 
I'm still waiting to find out if she ran to the courthouse to get an injunction on John. Or did she call the sheriff? Apparently not. Uh, so I'll share with you that my baby is not my problem. John Cook and the stress that that man puts me through is my prob period. I, I know you're not believing it, but it is prob period. It's John Cook is her prob period. And I won't bother you guys anymore. I think I, now I'm not going to run for town council. I think I'll just mind my own business. There's no one going to run me out of here. You understand, this is every, she started these Facebook groups. She started attacking every resident in Otter Creek on these Facebook groups. And they started to fight back. And now, George and I said nothing through all of this. Nothing. Nothing at all. And so this has nothing to do with me and George. Mm -mm. This has everything to do with the other residents of Otter Creek. Nobody's going to run me out of here. This was my dream, and I'm going to live it with my girl. And even if I have to live it alone as a hermit. And then she goes on to say another one. This is March 6th, okay? March 6th. Now remember, in February, in February, she said she... She kicked George off the property. March is when she asked if she could, well, February she asked, but then March, March 16th was our... That was our meet and greet. Meet and greet. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in March, things are still cordial. She starts attacking us after March, after she can't get any donations from us. And we, we've well, and, never given her a penny. And publicity for her YouTube channel. No publicity. And rescue. No, no donations. I did give some toys to the child. But not to the parents. Because she was specific. watching a video. She asked for them. She begged for them because she was watching a video. Which mm -hmm. she told the courts. She has, she's only watched the three or four at the max. All right. So she goes on to say, um, I was just told by John that, jeez. Well, let's just say this. It says, accuse me of ducking Vice Mayor Zim. Okay. Accuse me of, we'll say ducking, Vice Sleeping. Mayor Zim. Sleeping. I didn't come over to my house and accuse me of sending him love hearts off of a stupid Valentine's background. She sent him a message with hearts. Which, on Facebook. On Facebook. All the residents know it. His wife knows it. Everybody knows it. Okay. This was, so everybody knows it. She, Lynette sending Zim messages with hearts. Uh, background. She posted I it publicly. On her group. That's true. Yeah. That's right. One was, of her many groups. That was one of the 13 that she lied about. Mm -hmm. uh, that's another lie that you'll see in court. Uh, I didn't come here. I didn't come here to cut down my stamps, my clothing, my glasses, my personality, me. No idea what that means. I didn't do that, but you can all have each other, yawn. You got John Cook. Congratulations. So this is her turning on everybody. So she's messaging people in Otter Creek. You can all have John Cook. Congratulations. Now you can have the drug dealer. You think I'm joking? She's saying it right here. John Cook is a drug dealer. Mm -hmm. Now, how many times has she run to Levy County Courthouse to get an injunction on him? I'm going to keep asking the question because she's going to be asked the question over and over and over and over again in court. Why didn't you go to Levy County Courthouse? Why didn't you go and get an injunction on John Cook? So you can have the drug dealer, the filthy drunk, and I'm going to be pleased and happy just to be me. It's out shameful for the people to be telling him, you telling me, telling him that I need to solve this communication. There wasn't. I heard you loud and clear, and I haven't bothered any of you. You realize she's being called out on something she did, sent an inappropriate communication with hearts to a married man, and now she's turning on the town. And then she's being told, no, you cannot ask for donations. That's inappropriate, and it's very inappropriate. You know, the, the only person that asked if they could try and get donations at Half Mill Time to Grill? It's Lynette. Nobody, none of the other vendors that are brought in. Not a single person, only her. And then she goes on to say March 6th, my baby and me don't need anybody. We don't need anybody but us. It's a shame, though, because I'm a really awesome, wonderful human being that happens to be going through a lot. My mother is dying! What? You think I'm joking? Look at this. Her mother never stops dying. Her mother has been dying for who knows how many years. Mama Sputin, you can't keep her down! You can't keep her down! My mother is dying. My mother isn't dying. She said, "My mother died." My mother died. And what my proof mother do you have that your mother died? 
My mother didn't die. It's, it's nonstop. It's nonstop insanity. My mother is dying. My ex-husband is a psychopath. My child has a lot of problems medically. And now a whole town. This is... By the way, George and I have not said anything. Not point. a word. We have not had one video. We have not said one word. Oh, we have told the residents, just stay silent. There's something very wrong with these two. Just... Maybe it will go away. So the psychopath she's referring to, the ex-husband psychopath? John. John. It's John. And then she goes, and now a whole town is turned against me. Huh. And you think this is about me and George? This is about a deranged, insane woman attacking an entire town, then crying victim, and then taking it to court. And now she's stuck in a battle that she cannot win. Remember, she wanted to remove John. It was her dream to be on that piece of property. Mm -hmm. At the end of this, I truly believe she will lose the vehicle. She will lose the camper. She will lose the property. She will lose everything. But she will gain three hots and a cot. <laughs>